what, what the lady's is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? An environmental activist and young black mother in Detroit may be forced to give birth in jail. Since she was 15 years old, Sawatu Salamara has fought for environmental justice. She campaigned against the Marathon Oil Refinery and the Detroit Renewable Power Trash Incinerator. She represented Detroit at the Paris Climate Summit. She's also worked to engage kids and educate young mothers about nutrition. Now at age 26, Sawatu was sentenced to a mandatory two years in prison on March 1st, following an incident last summer in which she brandished her unloaded and legally registered handgun while defending her mother and two-year-old daughter. She was sentenced last month to two years in prison, even though she is scheduled to give birth in June. Now let me show you how wicked the judicial system is in America. Let me show you how wicked the people who work within the judicial system are. Even though no shots were fired, no one was injured, Sawatu was convicted and sentenced to a mandatory two years in prison. Now, let me show you how this thing began. Let me give you the backstory. So, it started off on a Sunday evening in July in Detroit. So, Watu's family is home. She's there at the home where she lives with her mother, her brother, her sister, and her nieces. The complainant shows up with her daughter, drops her off at the house pulls away. Sawatu and her mother sitting on the porch and they're confused. They look at each other like, what's going on? They're confused because prior to this, these girls, this girl being dropped off, the girl and Sawatu's niece got into a fight at school in the restroom and the girl beat up Sawatu's niece. So Sawatu gets up and goes into the house and asks her niece, hey, you know this girl is out here? The niece's like, yeah. And so Sawatu calls her sister and says, hey, you know, did you say it was cool for her to come over? The sister's like, no, 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 it's not cool. So Sawatu is like, hey, you got to go. The girl protests, she don't want to go home. Sawatu's niece protests also. She don't want the girl to go to home, home because the two kids have settled their differences. They've already made up. Ten minutes later, the mother shows up to pick up the girl, to pick up her daughter. When the mother shows up, she's pissed off. She's acting a fool. She's cursing. She's yelling. She starts talking about how Sawatu's niece spends a night over her house and how they're friends and all of this carrying on. Sawatu don't trust the girl. She don't trust the mother. She's like, hey, y'all just go, just leave. The mother of the girl decides, the complainant decides to ram her car, use her car as a batter ram to ram Sawatu's car on the passing on the driver's side where Sawatu's two-year-old daughter is inside the car playing on the wheel like kids do from time to time. Sawatu panics and she goes inside the car, she grabs her kid, get her kid out of the car. So then the complaining witness turns her attention to Sawatu's mother. And she tries to ram Sawatu's mother with her car. She's using her car as a weapon. Sawatu's mother testified that the girl came so, the woman came so close to her with the car that she 
felt the wind. And that's when Sawatu retrieved her gun, her unloaded gun, to try to scare the woman off. She pointed the gun at her. Sawatu says that's when the woman grabbed the gun and said, oh, you got a gun. Uh, and she takes a picture of her. She says she snapped three pictures and then took off. The woman goes straight to the police station and files a report. Afterwards, Sawatu is called to the police station to give a statement. She goes in, give a statement, cool. Next thing she knows, she gets another call from the police station. This time, they want her to come in and she comes in uh, I mean, she gets a call from the police station and now they're calling her to tell her she needs to walk outside because SWAT is there to arrest her. And she goes through the motions of, you know, the trial and all of this stuff. And she actually gets convicted. She employs the stand your ground rule. You know, stand your ground. If somebody is threatening you with bodily harm, you can actually stand your ground. You don't have to run. You can stand your ground and defend yourself, which is what she did. But somehow, some way, they found her guilty. This is my problem with the stand your ground law. It's not made for black people. The stand your ground law was made for white people to kill and get away with it. That is what the stand your ground law was made for. It was not made for black folks. If you think I'm lying, all you got to do is look at the cases where black folks tried to use the stand your ground law and where white folks tried to use it. Look at how it works out for white folks. And look at, look at how it works out for everyone else. Not just black folks, but everybody else, especially if they use it against white folks. Now, if they use it against black folks or anybody else, they might, they might be cool. But if anybody else use stand your ground against white folks, normally it's a problem. They're just not going to get equal justice. That's why I say they use this law so that they can look out for each other and protect each other. Now, some white people that are looking at this are gonna look at this video and say, oh, Willie D, you're being racist. Nope, I'm being factual. You know, all you gotta do, look, man, I just look at the facts, man. You know, if this just happens to fall on your race, then that's what it is. I look at the facts and I cover s certain stories and, you know, I go in on black folks, but nobody ever tell me I hate black folks when I go in on black folks, but if I go in on somebody white, they'll say I'm racist. It's interesting how that works. So, it also should be noted, it should also be noted that the judge told the jury that, I mean, the judge didn't tell the jury that they had the option, uh, I mean, the judge didn't tell the, the jury that if they convicted her, that she would get a mandatory two years. And the judge uh, actually made the statement that it was, it was said that the judge told the jury that they shouldn't consider how much time that she gets. See, he was supposed to reveal to, to, to the jury uh, any type of mandatory sentences. Mandatory sentences are supposed to be revealed to the, to the jury, but he didn't reveal that to the jury. That lets you know what's going on. They railroaded her. She got taxed because she is a law-abiding citizen who chooses to exercise her First Amendment rights to free speech. This woman is a soldier for justice. Easy. Easy. A soldier. Been fighting for a long time. And I'm going to include a link to her uh, You Care account. There is a fund for her family that people are donating to. And I think it's already up to like $56,000, something like that. But somebody like that, 
I mean, if anybody is deserving, it's her. So I hope that y'all would be willing to make a contribution to the fund as I have. Now, it should be noted that the Michigan Department of Corrections, they are violating her rights. They refuse to give her food that is reflective of the type of food that Muslims eat. They, they will not give her an uh, hijab. You know, so they're violating her left and right and they're doing this on purpose. Now, you know, I've seen them accommodate people. Quick, it don't take long at all. But they're trying to make her, her out of an example because, you know, she goes up against the beast. So I love the woman for what she's doing. All these people out here that put that action in, not just talking, because it's easy to just get on social media and complain. But it's a whole nother level when you're out there and you're putting up work in and you're willing to sacrifice you you're willing to sacrifice your comfort sacrifice your your freedom hell sacrifice your life for the greater good of humanity that's what she's doing and what they're doing to this woman is dead wrong i keep telling y'all evil people run the world the wicked run america because there is no way possible that you can be a victim. You can have somebody trying to kill you, ramming into your car with your two-year-old child sitting in the seat, standing in the seat, playing with the steering wheel. Somebody trying to run over you, your mama and your daughter. And that person is free and you're locked up. That is the most backwards asinine shit ever but that's the country we live in the assailant the person who did all of the damage who started all of this she's free now detroit police said that the reason why uh Sawatu is the defendant in this case is because they have a policy. Whoever gets to the police station first and files a report, that person is considered the victim. You know how stupid that sounds? It's like, that means that I can just go up to, and shoot somebody in the head, go up to the police to, uh, station and say, that person tried to shoot me in the head and I'm clear, I'm the victim. You see how stupid that sounds? This is bad, man. Hey, man, make sure y'all leave. Um, y'all click that link in the uh, bottom of the description and make a donation to the fund. No more talk. What the ladies talking about? Yeah.